Okay, let's wrap up um, the reproduction of plants and take a look at how flowering is controlled um, using utilizing pigments. And so um, we want to look at why plants are flowering only at certain times of the year, and you can view that um, flash video to kind of have an introduction of that, but we're going to discuss it right now. Plants have to coordinate how they're producing their flowers to coincide with the best opportunities for reproduction. If a plant is flowering when um, organisms, insects, birds are not going to be present, then it's wasted its opportunity for reproduction. So it needs to be controlled um, in order to maintain um, its species. So looking at the photoperiodism, that's our plant's response to light involving the lengths of the day and night, and that's what we're looking at um, within the phytochrome. And that is how um, flowering of plants is controlled. Uh, environmental cues can help, uh, but basically the photoperiod is what should be studied, and it's the most reliable indicator on um, the time of year that that flower should bloom. So when we're looking at the photoperiod, um, you're going to see that plants are called a day plant, or a short day plant, a long day plant, but it's really not the day length that it's in, that's important. It's actually going to be the night length. So that's the part that gets really tricky about studying long day and short day plants and how they're controlled. So remember, um, as best as you can, that it is the night rather than the length of the day that is controlling um, when these flowers are blooming. And we'll see that in a little while. So let's just have an introduction of what this phytochrome um, is. It is a protein that is sensitive to light um, and, it, and it will detect light and specifically um, red wavelengths. So in the 1930s there was an experiment, um, made a little typo, experiment, um, of the germination of lettuce uh, seeds. They were exposed to water and then those swollen uh, filled water seeds were um, hit with a single color of light and then they were stored in the dark and for two days um, they let them stay in the dark and then they counted the seeds. Um, and they noticed that when 660 nanometers, which is red light, um, hit the seeds, it actually increased germination at the maximum. And 730 nanometers, which we call the far red um, wavelength, actually stopped germination completely. And so these are the key things that control the regulation of when flowering occurs. So just to take a look at phytochrome, um, there are, this is a phytochrome right here in this picture, um, in this structure, and right here is something called the chromophore. And the chromophore is the light absorbing portion of the phytochrome. Now it exists in two isometric forms. Um, you're getting your PR isomer, your red isomer, and if you have a chemistry background, remember isomers are the different ways that our chemicals can um, have its structure. And so the PR isomer is going to absorb R light at its maximum, and the R, I'm sorry, the PFR isomer will absorb far red light. So looking at the PR isomer, it's actually inhibition when it is utilized, and the PFR isomer will trigger germination, flower control, any sort of response, um, a developmental response to light. Cells beginning to grow, those sorts of things. So now, let's take that knowledge and apply it to this long day and short day um, idea. Now, looking at long day plants, they will bloom um, when days are long. Okay. And so that's looking at midsummer. Those are your summer plants, radishes, spinach, and lettuce. A short day plant um, will bloom during the spring, right, when the days are shorter, um, possibly autumn, toward the late summer. And those are poinsettias, chrysanthemums, and asters. And something that is day neutral really doesn't matter what the day length is. Those will bloom um, at any point, and those are going to be your roses, dandelions, and tomatoes. Now. Remember that the name is misleading. The critical period is not actually the day length, it's actually the length of the night. So, if you have a long day plant, it's going to be a short night. 
If it's a short day plant, it's going to be a long night. So everything's kind of opposite. And that's what's controlling when the flower is going to bloom open. So looking at the short day plants, they have what is known as a critical long night. That um, basically the length of the night has to hit a cer certain critical um, night length before it will actually bloom. So looking at the short day plant on this picture, notice when the light has exceeded that critical length, um, it's not going to bloom. So the short, that means that this day was too long. Okay? And so therefore the night is a little bit too short. Here the night is short enough, I'm sorry, the day is short enough, therefore the night will exceed that critical value that we're looking at, okay, the amount of hours, and it's going to bloom. And they did an experiment where they actually flashed a bit of light, the PR light, and that actually canceled out the um, the blooming of the, the light. So that's just showing um, an example of an experiment that was done. Now if you look at the long day plants, they have a critical short night. So if the night is short enough, therefore the day was long, right, that's a long day, it will bloom. If the day is too long, um, too short, and the night is too long, it's not going to grow. And then here where they flashed the light, it actually caused growth. So that's where you can see if you were to flash, if I flashed a P, PR and a PFR on the plant, it would actually end up canceling out. Therefore, we would see this occur here. So that can show, and that's how scientists were testing um, how those isomers were shifting back and forth. Let's take a look at the um, levels of our phytochrome and, and how much light has been um, exposed to it. So L, uh, um, long day plants are going to need a high level of that PFR. And so what's sort of happening is PFR is going to kind of store up during the day and during the night you're going to have a conversion of that PFR back into the FR isomer and so you get that slow conversion and then that's when you see blooming. So if we go back to this picture, right here is our um, long day and you get blooming because the night is short. right? And so we, we are looking for a high level of PFR at that point. If we have a high level of PFR, then you're going to get the blooming. Now, for short day plants, they need low levels of PFR in order to bloom. So going back to this picture, right? we see blooming here. And it has a longer night. Therefore, it also is going to require that it has um, low levels of PFR in order to bloom. So kind of to you know see how everything works, um, looking at something like an iris which is a long day plant, it will bloom when the nights are short, so it's a long day but the nights are short and it's because less PFR is going to be converted into PR, okay that conversion, therefore the levels of PFR are high. That PFR is necessary because, um, just to give you some um, background dealing with proteins, um, for your, the seniors, you guys learned this last year, Okay, the PFR will bind to a protein that acts as a transcription factor to switch genes on. Therefore, the flowering can begin. And in our short day plants, Okay, they need nights that are long, be, and that will allow for, or it's because P, more PFR is converted back into PR. Therefore, we have low levels of PFR represented, and that PFR will end up being an inhibitor in this case, and um, of the flowering in low levels of uh, short day plants. So that is, I know it is confusing. So there is some reading about phytochrome in your textbook. Please make sure that you read through that carefully, and then we will make sure to review this in class.